Well, welcome. Uh, this is our second discussion uh, for our anti-racism racism film series, and we are discussing the film I Am Not Your Negro um, by Raul Peck, and the focus is on the life and work of James Baldwin. And here today I am joined with two great and incredible people. Uh, one, Christian Watkins, who joined us for the first interview, is the Winman Fellow at the General Board of Church and Society and where he works alongside advocates on Capitol Hill as a means to equip and nourish church leaders and members to further social justice in their communities. And in particular, that means supporting um, the work of United Methodists in the Central and North Texas Conference. Uh, welcome, Christian. Thank you. And, Good to be here. Uh, it's <clears throat> great to have you here. And we also have uh, a very special guest, Reverend Brian X. Phelps, who's the current senior pastor at Church of the Disciple as well, Reverend Phelps has been recognized for both his scholarship and community service, uh, being an ardent activist holding membership in several organizations, including the Urban League, uh, Young Professionals, the NAACP, uh, Faith for Dallas, and the African American Pastors Coalition of Dallas. Brian, thank you so much for joining and okay. taking time. No well, why don't, I'm sorry, go ahead. I said no problem. Thank you for having me. <laughs> why don't we get started with a word of prayer? Um, I'm happy to open, but I don't want to be the only one praying, so uh, the Spirit's going to call on, on someone else to close, so I have no doubt. <laughs> that's, that's an old trick that John Thornburg yeah. says. Is, I know that someone has put it on the, spirits, on the Spirit to, to let you pray, <laughs> uh, so why don't we pray? Eternal God, for the gifts of this day, the creation among us, uh, the ability to be in conversation, to recognize your presence, and indeed where we as humans fall short to failing to recognize that and hurt one another. Be with us. Give you thanks for the ministry, lives, and work of these two incredible human beings. And we thank you for Brian and for Christian and all that they're doing to further the work of your kingdom. And we give thanks again for this time, and may we indeed learn about you through others, prophetic words, and through our experiences in creating a space to align ourselves to your um, incredible grace. Amen. Amen. Well, in terms of the film itself, and, and Brian, I know that you're, we talked earlier before setting up this interview, you're very familiar with the work of um, Brian Phelps. Brian Phelps, sorry. <laughs> you're very familiar. I can edit that out. Uh, you're very familiar with the work of uh, James Baldwin. And I'm wondering for you, and having known about his work and, and seen the film, you know, probably even before this, what really stuck out to you? What were the impressions you had after re-watching it or the last time that you watched it? Yeah, sure. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I was... Uh, uh, an expert on uh, James Baldwin, but definitely <laughs> he's, a, he's a part of my my uh, formation theologically and uh, mm -hmm. and in activism. Um, uh, when I was <clears throat> starting in my my work of activism, uh, I mean that's not to say that it's you know um, everything that you know activism is right now. Uh, it definitely plays a part in it, but. Um, part of my formation in that way and building my theology happened when uh, I was in high school and uh, even before that, but really I started taking it seriously in high school. But um, part of my formation included um, James Cones' uh, Black Liberation of Theology and James Baldwin's Fire Next Time. Uh, and I was in high school. Yeah, I was in high school. Wow. Uh, <laughs> You kind of have to have uh, something in Midland to 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 uh, survive and thrive, <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it that was my formation. And in uh, in a real sense, what it did for me then was it uh, it made me incredibly um, I, I'm trying to find the the right words, but it it, it really sparked a fire, if you will. <laughs> next time but um it really pushed me to a point of 
discomfort with being in mm-hmm. Midland, Texas, uh, mm-hmm. realizing that Midland, uh, for me, uh, since that's the, the birthplace of my formation um, and my person, it was, um, I became really uncomfortable and I felt like a stranger in my own home. Mm-hmm. Uh, not my physical home, but just where 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 I'm from. Uh, so I really yearned to get out. But what it birthed was this this real, uh, and I'm still working through it, uh, a sense of rage that you cannot divorce from uh, mm-hmm. the black lived experience. Uh, but really, the works of James Cone or mm-hmm. James Baldwin, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and what fuels I'm not your Negro. Uh, is that that insatiable rage. You cannot help but to feel it. And not only this rage, um, but also um, a very, a very profound grief, right? To mm. both bear the trauma of, of Blackness in this nation and, and have to articulate it, right? There's nothing more traumatic than bearing the trauma and having to be the salve for the trauma and so you you'll see that and you feel it mm-hmm. throughout i'm not your negro and really uh the the works of james baldwin and i would almost say the unfinished work of james baldwin right mm. um, so much so that he he places himself um in different places trying to escape something that is uh that interconnects the world almost is that this mm. this um persistent and nagging racism that reverberates in ways um, unknown just around the world. Uh, And so he basically chooses a lesser of two evils by going to Paris. (laughs) And then coming back because he feels as though I can't really talk about the experience without Mm. still living it. Like that that lived experience goes with him everywhere. So for me, uh, just the works of James Cone in in this film uh, speaks to I would almost say um, those of us who are committed to justice and Mm -hmm. and have an understanding of what it means to be uh, Black ontologically in this nation and throughout the world, really in the diaspora, uh, Mm -hmm. and those of us who have to speak about it, uh, just the very real and raw trauma and rage uh, that that just comes with it, uh, mm-hmm. but to to also point to a very real grief, and I'll move on. But there's a scene, and um, and it kind of plays out throughout the life of this this film, uh, where he is. I, I cannot tell where he is. I don't remember where he's at, but he's in a. He's basically per, doing a lecture. I want to say it's the University of Cambridge. I don't remember. Um, Cambridge. Oh, it's Cambridge. But he. I is, went there once upon a time. Yeah, he's he's in a room crowded by white people, right? Mm. He's done with his lecture. You can you can visibly see him like looking around at all of these people who are applauding his work and his lecture, and mm. he he's like taken aback by how many white people uh, are around him and what he just dumped on them right? Uh, What he just provided for them. And that, that for me, uh, speaks to um, that rage, that grief, uh, but also that traumatic work. And, and, you know, we can move on from here. But uh, it, it for me was, wasn't just about uh, the rage or the the grief, but now it's Mm -hmm. how much of this am I providing to the degree that I'm becoming your Negro or your token? Mm, mm, mm. you know thank you so I think yeah. that's what we we live in and i think that that's what his work speaks to i didn't think about the bodily i could i could sense in terms of the grief for you to ex- express that in your mm-hmm. your own personal history your identity mm-hmm. and that very much mirrors what he's talking about but to have lived that <laughs> to have lived in a black body to carry trauma and then to not just have trauma, but to speak to it. Mm -hmm. I think about people who have endured trauma in any respect and trying to articulate Mm -hmm. is a trigger. Yeah. And the tension between that. And I thought that's just a very moving and insightful um, 
word. So thank you for offering that. Mm -hmm. Christian, do you have anything to add on top of what uh, Brian has said or what your first reactions were to the film? I mean, Brian just beautifully articulated my uh, experiences as well. I mean, I share in the struggle because I am uh, a relatively woke black man, uh, constantly in a state of rage, you know, in this country, uh, even at, even though I was born and raised in the hood, in South Dallas, in sunny South Dallas, um, I was educated in the Ivory Tower. I went to Jesuit for high school, went to Loyola University, New Orleans for college, uh, for undergrad, went to SMU for graduate school, as all three of us, as, as uh, you two did. Um, but uh, with, I saw, I, when, when Brian mentioned that, you know, James left the United States and went to Paris, Mm -hmm. And it was a lesser of two evils to either stay in, stay in the fight or go retreat to regain consciousness or to just get a little semblance of peace. That's yeah. what, that's what we thought going to Jesuit and Loyola and these upper echelon, you know, universities, these predominantly white universities uh, was going to do, give me a little bit of peace. Mm -hmm. But, but truth be told, uh, if you walked with me through my life at Jesuit and at, at Loyola, you'd know the personal hell that I was in. You know, being one, being one of 14 uh, in a class of 230 some odd um, and a, in a school of 900, right? And though being one black man, being one of 14 black students, black men in a class of 236 in a school of 900. And those statistics only got smaller, that black statistic only got smaller as the classes went backwards, right? Hmm. So like, you know, that sense of camaraderie that was attempted to be developed there was not there. It was under, always undergirded with some uh, to ideal of tokenism. Or let me just find out. And gra gratefully, there were those who actually met me where I am. And I met them where they were and we grew together. Um, but the larger community, um, I was either a token or a problem. Mm. Mm. Or, not, or not relevant at all, you know. Um, and so, like the whole the whole movie, the movie, the articulation of the movie, the struggle to find oneself amid the chaos and to find one's purpose to be able to move forward effectively with others, you know, trying to bring other people forward. That 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 pretty much encapsulates what I believe my life has become as a justice advocate, especially in the mm. United, black man within the United Methodist Church, you know, a black man in America. Um, that's, that's, it speaks to the struggles that activists, as, as Brian said, uh, uh, experience on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Thank you.